linked together. And welcome to the 72 PC podcast where I interrupt Tom's conversation with the podcast. <laughs> What's up, guys? <laughs> oh, my God. I didn't know we were that close. Sorry. I, I was going to say shut up. I'm starting. But then I was like, nah, I'm just going to start and just <laughs> <laughs> screw it. Uh, we'll just yeah, start that, it. That works. That works. <laughs> What's up, guys? How's it going? Uh, oh, yeah. I forgot the intro because of the thing. Uh, this is the uh, podcast. Yeah. Where you can do the thing and we do the thing. Where we yeah. play games and you can contribute to the conversation in the game. Oh, my God. I didn't What's up? Got nothing. <laughs> oh, Tom's so ill prepared. I know. With us this week, we have Eric. What up? And we am have, I, I... of course, we have a Tom. Yeah, I'm, I'm here. I'm here, guys. Don't worry. <laughs> what were you going to say, so, Eric? Yeah. Oh, no, no. I, I thought my mute wasn't toggling properly. Like, oh, that's going to be bad because there's dogs. Oh. oh. <laughs> you also know what else isn't working right Dirty now? Dogs. Adam what? joining the damn party so we can play some games. Oh. Yeah, sorry, I have uh, Do Not Disturb on, so I don't get the party notification. Hello? Where'd it go? There it is. Where'd what go? Wait. No? Send it again. Hey, this is something maybe they broke with the um, thing, too. Accept it through uh, Rocket League. Uh, oh, there it is. So, Tom, how's your week been while we do this? Yeah. Hey. Um, so it's it's been okay. Um, unfortunately, I've been running some science experiments with quantum teleportation. And it turns out that the internet carries the same packages regardless of which universe I'm in. But physically, I think I'm in the same place as Adam. <laughs> but in a different timeline. So this is really weird. Uh, luckily, I am out of the smoke. There's no smoke here or wildfires. And actually, it's pretty much a utopia. I've escaped your version of 2020. Um, we're <laughs> drinking boon juice with President Jonathan Taylor Thomas just the other night. And it's been fantastic. I can't tell you what moon juice is, though. You'll find out in the 2045 version of your reality. It's great. Audio listeners will be very confused. Uh, just green screen shenanigans. That's all you need to know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That, that, that puts it pretty well. Green screen shenanigans. Green screen shenanigans. Save uh, my next album. I love it. Oh, we got uh, a so uh, you've club been up match. To Adam? Uh, just same thing as last week. I've been working on some music stuff again. I got another song done. And I've been playing some games. That's about it. You're, you're starting to uh, pump out some music. Yeah. Yeah, I'm doing the thing. It's It's been really nice to, to actually get some stuff done and and get it, you know, actually in a place where it can be shared with others. That's kind of cool. Yeah, and it, I, I like the vibe of it. It's not, uh, it's not um, tr I don't want to say traditional because it's a newer thing. It's not standard lo-fi in the way that it sounds. You're using like some different percussion and you're bringing in more of your background into it, which I like. So I don't yeah. want to call it lo-fi, but it's got that chillness to it. Yeah. Yeah, I started writing that initially because you requested a lo-fi hip-hop-ish song uh, for your Quick Hits videos, and I started making something which ended up not sounding like lo-fi, but sounded lo-fi adjacent, or whatever my version of lo-fi would be. So yes. I just kind of kept making really chill music like that. And it's been it's been a lot of fun. It's been a lot of fun listening to. Them. I've really been enjoying what you've been throwing down. I do like I, lo fi adjacent. I, I love that uh like being the person that makes music, you're not really aware of how other people perceive it and the fact that you recognize it as like what I was going for, but my flavor, which I don't know what my flavor is because I'm too close to it, right? But yeah. I think that's really cool. And and I heard a quote, uh, I read a quote the other day, and it said, um, like, for musicians trying to find their own sound, you basically, you find your own sound by trying to imitate your idols and failing. And I was like, oh, that kind of makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. So I was trying to make lo-fi hip-hop, and it ended up turning into this thing, and whatever this thing is, is what Eric perceives as my sound, and that's kind of cool. Yeah, I was going to say, like, I've, written music slash listen to your music for over a decade at this point. 
So like I've gotten used to like what I would kind of qualify as like an Adam sound. So when I heard that, I'm like, this is cool. I like this twist on it. So uh, when are we going to get the, the Doom 2016 version of your Ooh. music? <laughs> That's really I do have some metal stuff I can send you. I, I need was... some Adam Gordon interactions here. <laughs> that, that's like uh, circa late aughts, Adam. <laughs> yeah, every, like oh, most of the stuff I wrote, I don't know, between five and ten years ago. Yeah, yeah, was pretty much all heavy metal stuff. But yeah, but yeah I don't know how I nothing. saved that shot, by the way. Because you're I realize amazing. that's not a great podcast topic, but goddamn. It's amazing. When you hit a ball, you save a ball sometimes. <laughs> I, uh, I see no, Relentless is yes. there in the mid-Navi. Was... Thank you all for making it. Yeah, Relentless is here. Yeah, yeah. yeah and also, um, we uh, I think we called it out last week, but um, Josh was on the uh, ASP Weekly podcast uh, for their last podcast. So if you haven't listened to it yet, definitely go check that out. Nice. They uh, do a weekly podcast based off rocket league specifically so if we get too tangential there's an outlet for you yeah we always get tangential always because yeah, we are tangentlemen no boo, <laughs> no. boo. <laughs> i do not approve so that was the 72 pin connector podcast thank well, you for seeing you guys <laughs> Chewie asks, why is Josh never on the podcast? Toad? Actually, Josh used to be on the podcast every time we did the podcast. And yeah. then Josh became insanely busy with an esports team and having a child Damn, and man. having a life. So Imagine so. having responsibilities. Jesus. What kind of idiot has <laughs> responsibilities. Yeah. Right? Fucking Agreed with Chewie. What a fucking nerd. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh jeez! Oh. but anything noteworthy guys or should we just go ahead and roll into yes uh, there is something button. noteworthy there's something extremely oh. important that i need to discuss all with 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 you all i need oh, to no. discuss he, he stopped, he stopped driving yep uh, japanese gen right there oh so i got this new thing uh roku gin it's from suntory uh and it's like normal gin except with like a bunch of different Japanese specific botanicals and shit added to it to give it like a little bit of extra flavor and a little bit of little bit of weird tang. And it's it's tang. delicious. Oh my god. Like the like, you know how like the, got like that like like the, the orange drink tang? Beans. No, oh I wish. God. it's, it's I a wish. kick in a glass. <laughs> and now <laughs> now in a can in an alcohol. <laughs> But uh, yeah, it's it's good. It's really good. Uh, if you like kind of the the florally like piney junipery thing that gin usually gives you, check this out. Uh, and yeah, it's it's pretty great. So it's I, uh, very sippable. I've never purchased gin in my life, and I think I've had two or three drinks that were gin. I tried gin one like time, it. and it tasted like what I would imagine pine salt tasting like. Yeah, it's great. Like I could, when I'm drinking this, it really reminds me of cleaning my. Bed. How is that a retort? That makes Ooh. sense. <laughs> it, tastes like, it tastes like pine cell. Yeah, it's great. It I was, just go yeah. to my cleaning closet and just get some of that it shit was, when I need to fix. It was lemony, piney, and medicinal tasting. Yeah, it's nothing about but not medicinal. I don't know. I don't. It was probably cheap gin too. I I really have no idea. It's my roommates at the time. Nothing about that sounds appeasing to me. <laughs> I mean, I like the way I pine like, salt smells, kind of. <laughs> I love, I love pine. I love pine needles. I love pine candles. Anything pine, and this just makes it into a drinkable alcoholic form. Yes, please. How do you feel about pine cones? Um, they're okay. Mostly overrated. Yeah. <laughs> so that's where you land. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> nice to know. Um. But it was uh, Relentless calls out a um, specific type of whiskey. Is it the same um, brew company? Yes. Yes, it, okay. it is the same manufacturer. Suntory also does a whiskey, which I've heard is fantastic, but I've never tried it myself. The, yeah, the one thing I've heard about Japanese whiskey that I, I have not been able to corroborate because I haven't tried it myself is that 
it's obsessed with being like perfect whiskey, but without like any qualifications around that, like just straight up normal whiskey made extremely well. So some people actually think it's kind of boring. Like Japanese whiskeys are the perfect versions of what you would consider a whiskey, but there's like nothing, nothing that stands out about them. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, So I'll need to try that and, uh, and let you know. Yeah, I'm not, I haven't been doing anything with straight liquor in a while. It's just been pretty much beer. If I drink anything, just beer. Mm -hmm. Boring dude. But yeah, Yeah, well, I have water, so. (laughs) Water is simple. Ah, there we go. Sorry about that. Scoop back Wilson Irk. I don't get that reference, but we'll go with it. Scoot back, oh. Wilson at Irk. Oh, I got him. Yeah, I got you. I got you. Back you oh, you Wilson. Oh, home improvement reference. No, I think it's um, is it home improvement? Yeah, with the neighbor that's always like over the by the fence. Oh, oh, uh, howdy neighbor. I get it. Howdy neighbor. Nah, <laughs> but okay. Let me uh, sit up a little taller there. My, my That's apologies. a show I haven't uh, seen in forever. I yeah. grew up with that show. I was, I was actually going through uh, watching them all for what they're about two years ago. Oh yeah, is it? Yeah. Does it hold up? Is it good? Yeah, yeah, it's still enjoyable. It makes you realize his character is kind of shitty. <laughs> How so? Like, I mean, I mean, they're it, in traditional uh, sitcom fashion. He values things higher than he should over his family. And then in the very end, he makes the right call. But like some of the things that he values is like, wow, like that's, that's rough. But yeah, I haven't really. Like imagine valuing your family over all the other cool (laughs) stuff in your life. It just doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, 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 true. But anyway, um, I don't have anything interesting to bring up before we get into topics. So has anyone else got anything fun? Mm, uh, no, no, I don't think so. All no, right. It's been kind of boring. In that case, rather than asking what you guys have been up to, how about we just go ahead and uh, talk about the elephant in the room? Rocket League had a big fucking update. Oh, yeah. A yeah. really big fucking update. This is the first time we've uh, like seen concrete Epic Games stuff in the game. Mm-hmm. Uh, in the form so, of a new menu system and friend system thing. Can I say that the menu looks super fucking generic now? Like I didn't I didn't think it was like impressive before, but now it's just just there. I don't mind like, like the buttons and stuff, or do you mean the actual like, like the matchmaking the, the menu? Fucking text everywhere. <laughs> Everything's like these weird flat squared off angles or, or like shifted off angles and it just it looks cheap it looks like right. baby's first interface and I, I don't like it okay There's nothing i'm gonna back with it, but it's not it's not good i'm gonna back us up a little bit real quick so uh to fill in everyone who might not be rocket league finishiot aficionados uh nintendo kind of did a thing um they accidentally showed the release date for Rocket League free-to-play before Rocket League announced it. So then shortly thereafter, Rocket League comes out with this big announcement. Yeah, yeah, 23rd of September, we're going to be free-to-play. And tomorrow, we're updating the half of the content we've told you about. So they were updating to include a new UI, include tournament mode, and include the new pool for trade-ins. So nothing groundbreaking. And they also like brought in new assets for like the new ranks and stuff, but that's all locked. The new actual rank system for season quote unquote one starts the 23rd. So this week, what we got was half of the updates. And that is what Tom is describing. They rehauled, overhauled the interface. And like he said, baby's first interface is just rectangles from the initial menu. I wonder how much of that is is going to stay or if they're going to 
change a lot of that stuff. I mean, I get that they releasing the, they're releasing the update a little sooner than they wanted to or whatever, but I would still imagine that the interface would have been done before then anyway. It's probably yeah. just me being picky. Like honestly, yeah. it doesn't look awful. I don't think it, it looks bad. Just I just looks cheap. They did take out a couple a lot of features of that I liked, which is the quick queue and the free play or the training menu on the main menu or in between matches. So Yeah. It, it's more button presses to do certain things, which irks yeah. me. And there's been some bugs in this one. One of which, um, I haven't been watching RLCS too closely today. I don't know if it impacted them. So what it'll do is take your teammates' names and put them onto opponent icons. <laughs> so all of a sudden, I had Scott driving right at me when I thought I was on a one-on-one. -on -one. And I started asking him what he's doing, come to find out it was the opponent with his name on the plate. Oh. <laughs> Super disarming, man. I've seen that happen with Steam profile pictures and stuff, but I haven't, I don't know if I've seen that with actual name tags before. Yeah, man, it was, it was pretty brutal. And with RLCS going on right now, it's all over internet. So it's not like they can say, hey, everyone, we're just running a older version of the build locally on LAN. It's online. Everyone's running the same <laughs> shit we are. So Chewy says oh. that one of the devs said that they're changing the some of the interface stuff. Yeah, it was universally disliked. Though I will say, after you get through the initial menu, when you're selecting your uh, playlist, that menu looks pretty nice. So there are some things they've done well, and like they've reorganized things that irritated people, but they put them in spots where they make sense. So I think it's going to be one of those things where over time you'll get used to it on some of them yeah not all of them like the training one's a pretty big what are you doing as well as not having quick queue <laughs> oh yeah and also um this update included the new merc hit box mid rlcs season which also seems really weird i mean called out yeah let's be honest though not a lot of pros running merc these days i don't think so I don't think. But that was that's... because it was an octane hitbox. No, it's because it was the Merc. It, that they didn't run the Merc before the hitbox standard standardization. Like that's but not is it, a did it go back well to the original car. Merc box or is it a new hitbox? I think it's new. Justin was playing it on the grid. Jewy or Jewy Jeezy Chewy calls out. Justin on the grid with a Merc. That is great. That's amazing. <laughs> but yeah, um, it's had some bugs with the interface where you can't actually uh, click into your playlist without selecting a different mode first. Um, yeah, just in general. But I've had an I issue in the. Go ahead. I had an issue in the garage where it'll show if I like if I go to one of my presets and then click the analog stick to switch the team color to see the other one it'll show a different preset altogether like a different car and everything so i i can actually explain exactly what it's doing i'm not going to because it's fucking complicated but it's weird if you change color it'll go back to your original car that you had up but if you go into edit preset it's still on the car you initially had when you hit the button yeah so it's only visually changing. It's not changing underneath, which is yeah, yeah, yeah. It's such a weird fucking thing there. <laughs> but uh, yeah, did uh, a tournament mode. So part of this update was launching the new tournament scene, which has its own currency and shop, which uh, I'll say I kind of like how it works. So when you play in a tournament, even if you lose, you get credits. And then there's a shop where it's kind of like a... Um, loot crate but it's only tournament credit so you can't pay any money so what ends up happening is let's say i don't win anything i have very little currency of the three options there's a cheap one a middle one and a expensive one the cheap one will get you any any item in the entire crate or in the entire series of items but if you go to the middle one, it guarantees you that you'll only get a rare or better. And if you go to the most expensive one, it guarantees you get only very rare or better. So you're still playing with loot boxes underneath the scene, but it's all through a currency you can only earn in game.
from performing in tournaments. And I will say, if you win a single round in a tournament, you automatically have enough for the top loot box. Automatically. Oh, cool. So it's it's really cool. Oh, yeah. And the most expensive one is also always painted. Oh, that was because of the weekly bonus. Thank you, Scott. Um, there's bonuses. So your first time and second time and third time placing, you'll get a special bonus. And that's what actually put me over the edge. So, yes, that's how that's going to go. That's It's fun. Uh, there's only been three, I think, per region. Two or three. Th but, yeah. So, that's Rocket League. Anyone have anything else to say? I feel like I've been just... I'm I'm glad that they actually did something with the tournament mode because tournament mode's been in for a while now and I think everybody just kind of dropped off of it because there just wasn't a lot there. So yeah. it's really cool that um, it's really cool that they're actually adding features to that mode to make it more, I don't know, interesting for everybody and give somebody a reason to play it. It's cool. And it, it really does. Um, I was playing with Dobby and um, d -Laz, and it was actually like a the quality of the match was great they did a great job at balancing out mmrs secondly man it felt intense like you wanted to win uh we was in a part it was all best of ones so you know if you lost you were done it's like it, it got kind of intense and it was really fun but yeah um that's that's all i got um uh, any of you guys want to take it Oh, speaking of bugs, look at this guy on the other team. Oh, never mind. It just switched. <laughs> Tom's name <laughs> was on the bot. So, well, I mean, that's just me. I am a bot. <laughs> the new bot AI right. is actually Tom. Yep, that's it. Oh, yeah, they added a new bot AI. I did forget about that. That's somehow supposed to be even easier than Rookie. Not sure how uh, that works. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. Anyway, oh, there is one more thing. They introduced a interactive tutorial for when all the oh, that thing was cool. Come. So yeah, I'll, that was. I'll admit, when I first launched that, I was like, "Oh, did it reset all of my stuff?" And it thinks I just bought the game and is making me do this thing again because I I didn't remember. It's been so long since I got the game. Like I. I didn't think that was what was in the game originally, but I thought that maybe the game thought I was a brand new player, and I thought maybe I lost all of all of my settings and all that kind of stuff because that's happened before. They're making everybody do it. Yeah. But yeah, it was really it was cool. cool. It was nice. Yeah, I, I, it's not a super in-depth. There it is again. But it is, Sorry. <laughs> but it is absolutely a, uh, hey, this is enough details to get you in the game and going. Yeah. Because let's be honest, double jumping is a challenge when you first start in the game. So, yeah. That's what it is. Um, so I'm just going to uh, throw this to someone rather than wait for someone to step up. Tom, you're uh, playing yeah. an older game. <laughs> How old are we what talking? What remains of Edith I, Fitch? I'm fucking going nuts because like somebody random jumped into the game and it's goddamn Maldini. Maldini. The, like, yeah, one of the OG 72 P PC homies. Uh, so, Maldini, if, if you're watching the stream, hello. Welcome. Um, <laughs> that's just wild. Anyway, uh, yeah, so I, uh, I played through What Remains of Edith Finch because I got it for free on Epic. It's been on my wish list forever. Um, I got it for free on Epic, like... Uh, yeah, I remember, it was free a long time ago, wasn't it? Ago. Yeah, like a very long time. Um, and I had never played it before. Um, and it's really, really good. So if you want, if you like the story of walking simulators, but don't like the whole W gameplay of most walking simulators, uh, what remains of Edith Finch is actually probably for you. Um, it's a series of like loosely collected mini games. Like they're not super in depth. You're not going to like spend time getting good at them, but it gives you a, you know, kind of something to go through while you're waiting for story beats. Uh, basically. And it's it's good. It's really good. I enjoy the story. Like, it's not anything that's going to blow your mind, um, but it's good. It's enjoyable. Um, it's a little tragic, a little sad, 
Uh, but honestly, a, a nice experience that, that I can recommend to people. Um, I've, so I've heard the game is really good. It's it's fantastic. It's, it's on so my radar. Friends, and I'm, I'm not going to get into spoilers is that you are like super far down this family tree that's big and, uh, you know, giant. Um, just so many fucking people in this family. Um, but they live in this big ass house that's been just built upon over the years. Just a, a shit ton of renovations and additions. And quite literally, it reaches up into the sky like some like weird fucked up babies for a skyscraper. Um, like you're half expecting the house to fall down at any moment. And your job is to go through and discover like the rooms that your your family members lived in and kind of their backstory and what happened to them and why they're not around anymore. Um, and it's kind of kind of cool. Um, the, the house gives you a little bit of a place to explore. There's a bunch of stuff that's not quite exactly how it seems. And um, the general story beats hit fairly well, um, especially if you can pick this up for cheap and you're looking for something like that, a nice chill game that... You can just get a story read to you or experience, and yeah, it's great. Um, it's not going to change your world, but it's absolutely solid. Fantastic. Yeah, right. I liked it. It was good. Right. So to, to give like one small example, um, there's a part where you're playing as somebody who has a really boring job at a fish cannery. Literally, your job is to put fish into this like guillotine thing and dehead the fish before they move on to the next stage in the assembly line. And the story is about how your guy just lives in his head because his reality is so fucking boring that he, he wants to create like a fantasy world that, where he can be what he wants to be instead of like the guy chopping off fish heads all day fucking long. Um, and What's wrong with cutting off fish heads all day long. <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, if that's your thing, that's your thing. Um, so, like, off to the side, like, from the left side on your screen, what happens is, like, a game will start to be developed. Like, you'll start controlling a character and walking through, like, you're this king, and you're, like, talking to people and waving around. And, like, the, the fantasy takes up more and more and more of your screen. But as the fish pile up in the real world, it blocks your view from this fantasy world. So you have to simultaneously use the mouse to to chop off fish heads and get them out of your out of your way and use the keyboard to walk around in this fantasy world. So you're basically playing two games at once. Like if you've ever been daydreaming at work and like reality unfortunately interjects and breaks you out of that daydream and you're trying to get back to that spot, it's that literal exact feeling but built in gameplay. So you can like just experience that. Um, it works really, really well. Uh, and there's a lot of stuff like that that I'm pretty happy about. That's actually pretty cool. Like, I've known about this game. Like, I've heard the name. I knew roughly what it was. But I didn't understand that it was kind of playing into daydream versus actual work job thing. That's actually kind of a cool concept. And that's just for one character, too. So the rest of the characters have got something completely different with them. Like, some of these mini games are super, super small. Like, you will be in there for three minutes and that's it. Um, and some of them are fairly long, like this daydream mini game. But every family member has got like their own little thing or their own like tragic death or interesting story to explore that the game walks you through using gameplay as kind of that base experience. And it works really fucking well. Hmm. Also, there was a hydrate your question there if you guys missed that. So, so. yeah, 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 I got Cheers. it. Cheers. Stay hydrated. So make sure to hydrate, drink your water. But did you end up beating it, Tom? Or did you just play some of it? It's, it's about mm, two hours long, two and a half hours long. It's not very long. Oh, now. I didn't realize it was that short of a game. Now I'm definitely going to play it. Yeah, it's, it's super. <laughs> um, you can, I literally played it in one sitting. Okay. Um, yeah, so I, I absolutely recommend that. Go, go check correct it out. Me, correct me if I'm wrong, but that, as, a, as a genre, that tends to be about the normal run length, right? A few uh, hours. Yeah. For most walking sims, yeah, it's usually a couple hours. Um, because if it, if it stays on too long, like you're going to lose story threads or stuff is going to be, you know, annoying to try to follow up on and you're going to take a break for a week and come back and all, oh, where the fuck was I? Like stuff like Gone Home. Gone Home was a couple hours. Dear Esther was like maybe an hour, hour and a half. 
Um, Stanley Parable was longer, but that's because you went through the game several times to get all the endings. Um, and then What Remains of Edith Finch, it's like two hours. So, yeah. I, I actually really like short games. There are games, believe it or not, where I don't want to spend mm-hmm. 40 hours existing in that world or doing the stuff the game wants me to do. I just I wanted to get into something and get out of something. Like, I wanted one hit. It's that feeling, like, where you can watch an episode of a TV show, but you won't sit down and watch a movie, right? Because yeah. it's just like, ah, oh, it's a movie, it's really long. But hey, 24 minutes of Futurama, I'm into that. <laughs> Yeah, I've I've mentioned it on the cast too before, and I I fully agree. I really appreciate when a game is not long and doesn't overstay its welcome, and and just puts a nice you know story or gameplay experience in a small package that's easily digestible, or depending on the story, not so easily digestible. But I mean, I I like going into a game knowing that I'm not going to have to commit twenty hours to it. Indeed. Yeah. And actually, a lot of my favorite games ever are less less than you know five hours one especially if they get the pacing right because a lot of games yeah. uh, if a game's 40 some hours odds are there's a lot of gameplay going in there it's not also just narrative mm-hmm. so like if you're just trying to tell a good story yeah man get in there get out be succinct yeah. don't waste beats but like yeah. a, a um, game like inside which has more yeah. gameplay to it than what you would, you know, as- associate with the walking simulator genre or whatever. Um, it's more puzzle oriented and stuff, but it's only what four hours long max, three four hours long. Yeah. And it was exactly as long as it needed to be. It was an extremely polished experience. Um, I don't know. Maybe my maybe my attention span is just really bad too. But you know, I'll I will absolutely fall off of a game if it's too long. I have I have actually been feeling uh, a lot of positive thoughts, a lot of positive uh, emotions around short games. Because mm-hmm. right now, like especially because I've been so busy at work recently, I look at my list I'm like, uh, okay, there's Shadow of Wardor. I know I have to complete that. That's what twenty to forty hours, somewhere around there, like standard triple A open world length, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I don't. I'm not going to get into that tonight. I just, I just don't want to. Yeah, yeah. Hey, this game is like an hour, or a match of Rocket League is five to ten minutes. Why, well, why not? I can get in, get <laughs> out, and that's it. Exactly. I, I want to get something Scott brought up real quick. He calls out that the Walking Dead or the Telltale's Walking Sims tend to be longer. I think they pull it off pretty well because they do episodic. So I cannot. Don't. Don't called telltale's games walking sims they aren't they're adventure games they are they are straight up point and click adventure games um but you know they they do like each episode tends to be i don't know three to four hours long and yeah the episodic thing does help when you don't want to play a 40 hour epic but they also tend to do the thing where each episode ends on a big ass cliffhanger right so Uh, I don't know. You gonna take a break now? Are the zombies gonna get him? You don't know, man. Load up the next episode. You'll find out. You're like, okay, fine. I'll I'll figure out just this one thing. Does does Carl survive? Ah, shit. Well, Not Coral. It's another cliffhanger, and I I just started, so yeah, I guess we're playing this. Also, um, I'm going to get in here and say I don't want to go down the go down the path of questioning here. Ah, uh, but was asked, <laughs> is it walking in a nice place in adventure? In other words, asking where the line drawn. So I also let's, let's not get into that. Yeah, <laughs> I also hate the people saying walking simulator. Like I hate that as a term I, and, as, and using it as a genre. But I have embraced walking simulator as a genre. Like people, people were flipping. Like, oh look, it's the whole W games. It's like, yeah, they are, and I love them. Give me all the walking simulators. <laughs> I would play Tear Esther every day until I die. <laughs> I think you're gonna get real tired. But anyway, <laughs> I digress. Um, yeah. There, there was another uh, new game on the list from another person. Adam, you put a little uh, bit of time in here. Not Wonder much time. Not much time. 
Undertale. Um, so, Tom, you gave me this game a long time ago, actually. I think it was for my birthday, like, two years ago? I can't remember. <laughs> it's been on my... So, I have, on Steam, I, I create groups for different categories of game, like multiplayer, old favorites is one of them. Uh, I have a not interesting category where I throw stuff that I know I'll never play, but I got it on, like, a Humble Bundle or something. Mm-hmm. Um, and I have a current playlist which is basically anything I've been playing recently or games I just bought that I haven't checked out yet, that kind of stuff. Stuff I plan or want to play. You know, if I sit down to play a game, I look through that list and be like, all right, do I start this one? Do I pick up where I left off on this one? Uh, Rocket League is always in there until the end of time. Uh, You Mm -hmm. know how it goes. So Undertale has been in there for two years because, you know, you bought me the game. I would at least give it enough respect to play it and try it out. Uh, So I finally did that today. I did it today, like actually maybe an hour and a half before we started getting ready for the podcast. Uh, man. So Undertale is a hugely, like, I don't want to say successful. I guess it was successful, but like it's very, very highly regarded. It's a cult classic or indie classic. Um, very, very highly rated. And... I'm a little apprehensive in whether or not I want to keep going because it contains so many things I don't like in games. Um, I'm not a big RPG guy. Um, I am a big visuals guy, which it has very lackluster visuals. And I know that's intentional, but it is not a good looking game. Um, it has random enemy encounters, which is something I hate because it just interrupts what I'm trying to do. And it has turn-based combat, which I hate. <laughs> It just has all of these things that I don't like, but I can see that there's something special there because even within the first half hour, um, it shows you these familiar gaming things, but things don't work like familiar gaming things. You know, you have a, a combat that comes up and you're encouraged not to fight. You know, you have... Um, everything is just weird, right? It's got a lot of character. And I know that they're going to do something cool with it later on. But I've heard that the game is like, what, 20 hours or something? No, no, God, no. Or 15 no, or Undertale 10? Is like, Undertale's like five. Maybe. Really? Yeah. I could have sworn somebody told me it was a longer game, game than that. Okay. So if you, if you want to go through and you, like without spoiling anything, yeah, you can end the game in various different ways. If you want to go through three or four times, yes, it will hit that 20 hour mark. Okay. If you don't, you're good after five. Okay. Six to yeah, ten. Scott's also saying about six to ten. And yeah. Scott's a pretty slow player when it comes into games because he does everything. He does all the things. Okay. Yeah. So I, I'm not sure where I stand with that yet. Um, it, it's just, it's one of those games that's doing a lot of interesting things that I can tell is going to be really cool. But I don't know if I have the patience to slog through the stuff I don't like about it, which is... Basically, everything involved with playing it besides experiencing what it's showing me. <laughs> so Undertale is um, like you you will be missing out on something if you're not the kind of person who played through um, Earthbound. Like it's it's quite it's literally started as a love letter to Earthbound and games like that. The, the Mother series. Weird ass American ass RPGs. Uh, mm-hmm. Well, I mean, Japanese developed RPGs, but set in America, modern America. Um, Undertale's a weird fucking series. And if if you haven't come from that background, you are going to miss a lot of its charm. Like the look Mm -hmm. is literally under or is literally earthbound. Okay, I can see that. Uh, Who called out the music? Somebody called out the music. Oh, yeah. Uh, Scott called out the music in the chat. Um, I do agree. The music is fantastic. But when the same fantastic song is looping for 20 minutes straight while I'm going through this gameplay, that also bugs me. (laughs) Then it's just fantastic the whole time. Yeah, and then it gets stuck in my head. And then what I thought was fantastic 20 minutes ago, I hate with every ounce of my being. And that's (laughs) I already ran into that like half an hour into the game. So that's that's kind of bothersome. But the music is really cool because it's this... It's like a mashup of retro and modern. So like... It's kind of produced really well, like from an actual fidelity standpoint, but it's also using like crappy sounds from 
you know like retro style stuff so it's got it's got a cool like contrast of old jankness and new sounding music and it's composed really well the music itself like just the compositions are, are really really solid nice but yeah so i i'm so, not i'm not really sure where i stand with it right now like i played it for i think 45 minutes earlier and by the end of the 45 minutes i was ready to not play it anymore and i don't i don't know how much of that is just like my mood at the time but uh, we'll we'll see what happens with that. If I play some more, I will definitely update more on the cast. I, so I can we, totally get the mood thing. Like sometimes yeah. you're just in the mood. Like I, man, I'm, I don't I'm bad play about that. Type. Like there can if be one have, of my favorite games of all time, but if I'm not in the mood to play it, I will not have any fun playing it. If I do play it. So, yeah, I'm I'm pretty sure my mic has died. <laughs> thanks to this. No, 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 no. We heard you. We heard you. Okay, I good. can hear you. Yeah. I'm just making sure. Discord has been cutting my mic silently. Oh, um, that's not good. Which has been great for everyone else, but bad for me. <laughs> Too bad um, it didn't happen. I wonder why it was so peaceful. Ago. Yeah. 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 So if, if you don't like RPGs at all, you're probably going to have a hard time playing Undertale. Um, I do have a question, though, because it's not, it's not typical RPG combat. Like, yes, there are turn-based encounters, but... Mm -hmm. When you're avoiding attacks, you're playing a bullet hell shooter. Yeah, that's true. And what that was kind that? of an that was an interesting mechanic. So when when you're getting attacked from an enemy, you have this basically little square area in the the bottom portion of your screen and a little heart that represents your health. And when they go to attack you, uh, things will be in that um, in that square that you have to avoid by moving your heart around with the directional keys. So, so that little bit is fun. Oh, that's that's, a, that's, that's an interesting. Cool. That's a cool twist on the turn, the turn-based gameplay that I should have brought up. It's yeah, a little active. To it go does, with it. yeah, and and it's usually, um, it, it's, it kind of matches up with what the enemy is and adds to the the character of it. Like, like one of these enemies was, it was like a ghost thing that didn't really want to do anything. It was just like in my way and I have to fight it to get it out of the way. And there's a point where it goes to attack me, but in that box it just says something like, oh, I can't really be bothered right now. <laughs> like text. So where I don't have to avoid an attack right there. And <laughs> it just shows that in the box instead. Which is kind of cool. funny. Yeah. Where I was fighting a frog enemy and his attack was like a little frog sprite would actually be in that box and it would, you know, jump jump after my heart or whatever. So that kind of stuff was cool. Like the game has so much charm and character and like humor, um, you know. I actually laughed out loud a couple of times, like almost immediately in the game. <laughs> like <laughs> that part of it, like I do like. Did I like what? Uh, the tutorial. Yes, tutorial was fantastic. <laughs> the non-tutorial. <laughs> so the one of the characters early on in the game says, "Hey, hey." Be careful here. There are spikes. Uh, let me let me lead you through the the hidden path. And literally, like you know, hand holding tutorials in video games. This character named Toriel takes your hand and literally walks you through hand holding gameplay <laughs> to get you through the tutorial, which is fucking great. Yeah, it's fantastic. Sorry, we're typing into the uh, Rocket League chat. Yeah. Sorry, audio, audio listeners, you're gonna have to wait. These people are important to us. Yep. Yes, indeed. But so, uh, Undertale. You're not sure if you're coming back to it or not. Yeah, I don't know. I, I might give it a little more, a little more time. But I could see myself just maybe just looking up videos and spoiling it all, and and just <laughs> going that route. I don't know. We'll all see right. what happens. Yeah. Well. I actually had a little bit of a new game. I shouldn't say a little no. bit. It absolutely is a new game. Um, I picked up For the King about a month ago on a Humble Sales, like eight bucks. It's a roguelite um, tile-based tactical RPG, turn-based too. Like, So you have an overworld that's all tiles. And then when you get into combat, what, whoever's in tiles close to the combat gets pulled into the combat. And then it's a turn-based combat where it's not you go, I go. It's actually based off speed of character. 
So if you have a really slow character, other people will go two, three times before he goes again. So kind of like initiative scores in D&D, but for yes. turn-based combat. Yes. Um, it's really fun so far. It's got a lot of um, item upgrade stuff that you have to do. I'm still on my first run, so I haven't really been exposed to the rogue light as aspect yet. But I have some of the currency, so I'm, once I die, I'll be interested to see what it comes out to. But fuck, man, I'm like five, six hours in this run. Jesus, that's long for a rogue light. Um, so rogue light versus rogue like. Rogue light implies that there is something that is going to allow you to be stronger run after run, like a meta game. So examples of that would be something like Rogue Legacy versus Rogue Like would be something more in the lines of just Binding of Isaac. So there is some subtle difference between the two. It's not just an arbitrary distinction. But for sure. Yeah. Um, anyway, the game is pretty good. It's a 3v3. Um, 3v3. God damn it. I'm distracted. 3v3 turn based. Um, you have multiple classes of people and they'll all have a lot of plethora of different stats. So let's say you have a strength character and you have a sword. So the sword's governing stat is strength and you have three rolls on it. If you, and it's either hit or miss. If you hit on all three, you'll do max damage. If you miss on all three, you do no damage. But it gets starts to get interesting because based on your strength, let's say you're really bad strength and you're using a strength-based weapon. It'll tell you, you have a 40% chance each time you try one of these. So if it's three different swings, it's 40% three different times. So it'll actually take you down further and further if you're not good with the stats. Cool. Interesting. But yeah, um, it's really fun. Um, a few streamers were picking it up a while ago. That's when it got brought to my attention. Um, I just don't know how, I don't want to say how replayable. I'm sure it's got a lot of replayable, but my right. run is taking five, six hours. So it's just it's a lot. crazy. It's a lot yeah. for one run. It's a whole lot for one run. So that's where I just don't know how, like Isaac, an hour, you're done tops yeah at tops tops so i just don't know what to expect out of this that said i'm enjoying the piss out of it Good. so come next week i should be able to hopefully have a little more information on it but that's the only new thing i had on the docket this week i see you were playing some poker stars tom i was so uh yeah last night i uh i was feeling a little bit social um, people were offline. It was like two in the morning. So I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll just sit at a table and play some poker. So I put on my headset, set a beer next to me and literally just played cards for a couple hours, uh, with randos on the internet. And that was fucking great. I cleaned fucking house though. Um, there were, uh, <laughs> there's like three hands back to back where I got some just absolute bullshit. Good luck. Uh, and <laughs> I've I've only had this experience a handful of times in, in my gaming life, but I did so well that everybody just left. Uh. Like, literally, the table cleared out. Um, so, like, the, the typical buy-in was 5k. I left with 60. Um, I just, I slapped. I slapped up all fucking night. Uh, and it was great. Do you have your sunglasses on? Um, I... I mean, virtual sunglasses. So, yes. Did um, you have your smoking donkey? No, I had I had my vaping rubber duck. Oh. We're having a little bit of a so, chat dispute here. <laughs> yeah. Don't 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 get into genre fights. So, what was Nobody your uh, what was your best hand of the night? Uh, I I got uh, an inside flush. Um, on the, it was, it's Texas Hold'em and I got an inside oh. flush on the last draw. Um, and I was, I was holding, I was waiting. Um, and I like, before it even happened, I was throwing out like, okay, I'm just going to bet 5k here. And everyone's like, wait, really? Cause that forces basically everyone at the table to go all in, except those of us who have been winning. 
Um, so everyone's like, fine, this guy's got nothing. He threw this like right at the start. Because right at the start, I could see I had, you know, two cards, two cards in my hand. I'm waiting for the one right in the middle. And I'm like, all right, there's a very small chance I'm going to get this. But hey, it's fake video game money. So why the fuck not? So I just started <laughs> like, throwing down bets left and right. Like, all right, come on, bro. Let's do this. I'm, I'm either going to get lucky right now or I'm going to not. Um, <laughs> And I mean, yeah, last isn't that card, really the only two options anytime? Yeah, basically. So uh, last night, got got that on the last draw, and after I won that, the table just left. They're like, "Well, that's <laughs> that's enough day tonight. Thanks, guys." I'm like, oh shit! All right, so I had to go find some other people to play with. Were you doing VR or? Yeah. Right. Oh yeah. You can yeah, actually do poker for VR flat screen, can't you? I don't know. I've never tried. Uh, side game. question for game I'm thinking. Side question as a non poker guy, what's an inside flush? So like let's say you've got one, two, three, or uh one, two, four, five. Uh -huh. You're getting the inside card. As opposed to um, two, three, four, five, or yeah. Where where you can get the ones on the outside. Okay, and then also quick uh, correction real quick. That's a straight, not a flush. Or, sorry, sorry, inside straight. Yeah. Oh yeah, not a flush. It means that you're drawing for the inside number to complete a straight. Yeah. So you're missing the middle, and you need the middle on a draw. Or yeah. a flip. If you have yeah. the outside, you have two spots to get that instead of just the one. So your chances are pretty decently increased. Yeah. But, yeah, that's what that is. And for just sick of complete Same straight, goddamn straight, flush. My bad. Five, <laughs> number, five numbers in a row, a flush is all of the same suits. Yeah. Just, just for everyone out there, that's like, what the fuck's this conversation? I, I did too. get, I did get a uh, complete a flush on the last draw as well, which was fun. That's, it's always that fun winning. Bad. It's always fun winning on the last, the last card, man. Give me it on the yeah. river, fuck yeah. Yeah, there's, there's just some bullshit with, with the whole thing. Uh, and and last night I sat down at a table where um, bullshit was already happening. Apparently. Uh, one of the players, um, like they had literally the exact same hand, but one guy had like the technically higher suit than the other one, and he took like this the seventy five k pot. Oh, for the whole thing, like, and it was it was on some goddamn bullshit, but it was great because <laughs> we were all just sitting there, we were drinking our beers and having a fantastic time. <laughs> ah, sounds good. So, yeah. so, so I played some Tarkov today. And lately, I've been kind of frustrated because the game just doesn't run very well. Um, it was, it's been choppy, uh, frame rate's not been good, and whatever. So I was messing with my settings today, graphics settings. Nothing really made a difference. Um, so I started re doing some research, and I ended up going into my BIOS and enabling some sort of profile related to RAM because apparently my RAM was running at 1066 instead of 3200. Oh, so I had to enable it. it was like this XMP profile or something like that. I don't know that much about this sort of thing. So I know I sound very unintelligent it's because I am. I don't know really what it is or what it does. But it, apparently my RAM was not running at the clock speed it's supposed to be. So. So, yeah, I did that. And all of a sudden things were much smoother. So, yeah, that was a win for the, <laughs> that was a win for the day. Hmm. That makes me think maybe I should check I was, into this. I was going to say, I know you were having uh, performance issues too. And don't get me wrong, the game still runs like garbage compared to the you know, specs and everything. But it was way better than it was. Noticeably smoother. Yeah, Tarkov's known under optimized game. But yeah. yeah, I'll have to check my shit because that'd be great if that helps. Yeah. What's up, um, what's up, Toxic Kill? Toxic Kill. Toxic Kill. Uh, anyone else have any other? Tom, you do, actually. Uh, yeah. You played more Hitman 2. Hitman yeah. 2. Um, so I fucking love Hitman because it's not it's not a super serious game. Like, yes, you are. You are the world's best international assassin uh, who dresses up as a caterer in order to poison the blueberry muffins so some guy gets the shits and you can strangle him in the bathroom. Um, 
<laughs> like it's it's fantastic. And I was uh, going through and playing some more of their mission stories, which is basically uh, we're we're gonna give you some hints on some like scripted NPCs that you can use to mm -hmm. further the story or break uh, other NPCs' loops or um, basically just cause insane amounts of mischief. So I was running around just doing all kinds of shit. Uh, I put a bunch of people to sleep because I stole a um, a fumigator's outfit and like fumigation stuff. I just hooked it up to a house, poisoned everyone inside. It was great. It was just <laughs> fucking stupid. <laughs> Sounds like a good Friday, a good Saturday the evening. Sand, the sandbox of Hitman always sounds so much fun to me, and yeah. then I never play the game. It is so fucking stupid. Like, um, I, I uh, stole a uh, a mascot outfit for this race. Like, it's like an F one race, and I'm dressed as like this big ass pink flamingo mascot. Uh, like strangling people in the bathroom and there's <laughs> nothing more funny than watching somebody in a flamingo costume like lining up his his silenced pistol like <laughs> fucking fucking pink wings holding this gun holding someone at gunpoint it's it's just great um if you want to fuck around if you like stealth games and like feeling powerful and in, in making mischief yeah hitman still remains to be a fantastic time if it gets super cheap on like the holiday sale or something, I might have to pick it up. It's it's so fucking good. Um, and you can play through all the levels in Hitman One for that game. Like the that... the way they structured the the DLC system is really nice because you literally just import one game into the other one. I need to see if I've got a code. I might have a code for Hitman Two laying around. I feel bad because when the the first reboot of Hitman happened. I gave that game away. It came with oh, my graphics really? card and a coworker of mine liked it. And I was like, here, I've never really played them much. You can play uh, it. You can have it. Well, I regret. Now that Tom's been uh, telling us how good it is for the past year. It's so good. I also played one other thing. Um, I've been looking for a new chill game. Like, er, you've got No Man's Sky. You love No Man's Sky for that chill and vibe out kind of game. Um, I decided to do that with Microsoft Flight Simulator. So, hey. you know, take off from New York, fly around the city, check out buildings, crash into my own apartment. Like, there's a <laughs> lot of things to do in Flight Simulator. But last night, I literally just put on some tunes, grabbed a beer, and sat here and just flew around, chilling, looking at shit. It was How's it running great. on your computer? I mean, it's getting 40 FPS, but frankly, I don't need a whole lot more. Now, I will say, playing with a controller makes that game so much more chill than playing with uh, mouse and keyboard. Yes, uh, it does. Like, like, it's it's expecting you to memorize a giant fucking air, aircraft of controls. And with a controller, it's like, I don't know, man, use the stick. I'm like, oh, cool, that's it. Um, what about so, Hotos? Yeah. Uh, I haven't tried it yet. I do have that set up. I haven't tried it yet because I play on Parsec. And that doesn't work with Parsec. Oh, boo. Yeah, I know. You should do it once just on your actual PC just to see how well it runs or how it plays. Yeah. Yeah. But either way, um, anyone got anything else for news before or for games before we uh, roll on into the uh, news section? Mm. Snow Day is a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. Tom Scott and I were playing some Snow Day. Had a whole lot of fun. Great. With it. Yeah, I did. I was effective. I did good stuff. You probably wouldn't yeah. know if you know I'm playing right now, but I'm good at Snow Day. The match has <laughs> actually played pretty well, so it's a good time. Anyway, good job, fellas, let, let's get in some not nice stuff, and then we'll finish with some nice stuff because we're mindful of that now. <laughs> um, <laughs> Razer, the uh, brand of keyboards and other electronic devices for gamers had leaked 100,000 users' uh, personal information. Whoops. And it was effectively names, address, phone numbers, emails. As Tom put it, everything that's on a credit card transaction except for your credit card information. Yep. So, uh, yeah, if, um, if you've got Razer products and have used their cloud solutions, well, guess what? Your phone number, physical address, all that shit's out in the wind. So... Whoops. 
which is even... kind of frustrating to everyone using this stuff because their their cloud integration doesn't really add a whole lot of benefit anyway. And you're basically forced into it if you want to use their software. So it's kind of damned if you do, damned if you don't. Kind of yeah. not really on topic, right. but pertaining to Razer. Did you see that they have gaming energy gum? God, yes. yes. <laughs> it's like G Fuel, but uh, gum. <laughs> so, guys, I would like to sell you uh, gaming energy sassafras drops. It helps you score better. Yeah, yeah. give me give me some will, right now. You're I will sell you one one gamer candy for a oh. dollar. Does it have a distinct non licorice flavor? Yes. That is so, uh, such a stupid fucking Discord product. If you want gamer drops. <laughs> such a stupid fucking product. Sorry, anyone who's uh, hawking that stuff. I'm sorry, but it's a stupid product. Yeah, anyway, um, Apple. So more with the corporate dick wagging. Uh, Apple waving. is and waving. I always say wagging because dog tails. It doesn't matter. I guess they could be wagging it too. Yeah. Either way, uh, Apple is ending Fortnite. Save the world updates for Mac. Yep. So this is just gonna keep going. Yep. Not, yep. No longer just on mobile. Now it's for Macs. So there's your update. The same developer account. Yep. So, so um. Yeah. And, and some fun news and something I hit on quickness or quick hits. Shameless plug. Go check out quick hits. Quick hits. Um, there's a new um, Harry Potter game coming to town. Uh, Harry I'm... Potter. It's uh, called Hogwarts Legacy. Yeah, I'm not a Harry Potter guy. I mean, it looks cool, but I I have no no like dog in this fight. So I don't know. Are you guys Harry Potter fans? I like the movies. I'm not. I'm not a huge Harry Potter fan, but I will be out there saying this world is ripe for a really good RPG because there's a lot of really cool shit that can do in that world. Yeah. Because, I mean, it's just a fantasy world. It's set up, and it's mm -hmm. more than just the school. Yeah. Yeah. I know there were some Harry Potter games a long time ago. I don't know if any of them were any decent or not. Um, this Wizard? is being made by um, Portkey Games. It's a studio that was set up just for Harry Potter games. And to date, the only thing they've done is two mobile games. Mm. So that's going to be interesting. That's not a good sign. <laughs> I mean, they might get some help in there, but yeah, I mean, they've got two Harry Potter mobile games. So we'll see. I hope it goes well because they could do some really cool shit in this. Yeah, oh, for sure. Yeah. It's and, a good um, foundational out, story for games, I think. Yeah, and it predates the events of actual Harry Potter, if I remember right. So it's not like you're playing the Harry Potter story, which is something else I appreciate because licensed games that do that tend to not be too great. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, definitely. But either way, it's going to be coming out. Uh, they didn't give us a year, or even a season. Just all they said is next year. So we'll see. Uh, hopefully it's good. Uh, let's see what else we got. Fall Guys has a cheater island, and I think I know what had. you're talking about with this. Had, had, had. Okay, explain it because I may not be what I was thinking then. Okay, so Fall Guys um, has been slowly ramping up their anti cheat because with with anti cheat, and this is why ban waves happen. You can't just ban everything you see as soon as you see it, um, because that shows cheaters. This is how they're catching us. When we did this thing, we got found. When we did this thing, we didn't. Like, it's quite literally like, like how a virus would respond to an immune system. Oh, this thing gets me killed? Well, let's do this thing instead, which didn't get me killed. Um, so they've been collecting data for a while. And they started by developing this thing called Cheater, I uh, yeah, Cheater Island, um, where if you were flagged as being a cheater... Um, it would queue you with only other cheaters. Where you could still win crowns and stuff, but you would have to play against your fellow assholes. Um, <laughs> which seems like a great idea. That's like, a good idea, yeah. Um, like, hey, uh, look, I just keep falling. Like, I can't find a match. Why's that? They said, well, in some regions, 
there aren't enough cheaters to pair you up with, so you would just be looking for a match forever. And there are some other bugs that legitimately cause this. They didn't really tip their hands, but it's because they were queuing into the cheaters lobby where there weren't enough cheaters to actually make a full 40 person match. Um, which is, which, which is a know, good kinda, thing. Kind of. Yeah, <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, they, they actually decided to get rid of it because people were posting and saying, Oh, look at this game. It's so fucking broken. I can't get into a match and confusing like legitimate users of the game who are running into bugs that looked exactly like that. Um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> that, that shot was great. <laughs> uh, but anyway, it was confusing people and actually making kind of a, a marketing issue for Fall Guys where the hackers were out there like telling people that the game is broken, even though it's only broken because they were hacking. Yeah. Um, so they, they turned that off and they're now doing band waves again, like most other people. Um, but yeah, they, they did a lot of exploration around how to fix the hacking problem. And the big Yetus update we've yet to hear about, but it is still coming, which is uh, another part of their, their anti-cheater uh, technology. Big Yetus is out. Is it? Big Yetus okay. dropped this week. That was going to be what I followed you up with. Okay. Um, big Yetus update live. What this did was add a lot of variants to a lot of maps. So all, almost all the maps now have a variant. So you can either get OG map or variant map. An example of that is, um, damn it, I'm just blanked at the map name. But it, you're going up this big slime hill at the end, and it's the poles that are going back and forth. Yeah. Well, they sub those poles out for fucking hammers. And certain matches, like ladders, have the big hammer they're calling Big Yetus. It's this big monster fucking hammer that's just swinging in the middle <laughs> that if you get hit by, you get sent flying. I love the name. So, <laughs> that is an elder cheating problem. That I don't know. But that was the big news that came out because this is the big mid, uh, mid-season pat- or patch was the Big Yetus update. Big Yetus. Big old Yetus. Maybe under the hood, they were also doing some anti-cheat stuff under there and they just didn't call it okay. out. But, Which makes yeah. sense. Like, especially if you, if you can't like tell people. I mean, you don't want to give a leg up, but yeah. So, Fall Guys, did an update. Still happening. More stuff going. Um, so, we got some PS5 news. Uh, let's kind of bundle this all together. First thing, we got prices. They prices. have a $400 console and a $500 console. And they're doing like. it the way I like. Yeah. So, with Microsoft, two different consoles with two different specs. One's a super strong console. One's a weak console. They're both the same gen of console. PlayStation, to keep a nice, now, clean baseline. The Xbox Series X, Xbox, or is this the Xbox Series X, Xbox S, S Series 360 Scorpio? <laughs> S, X, X, triple X. Tricky. Box. Yeah, that. Um, <laughs> so there, there's Microsoft Xbox Series X, super strong. Xbox Series S, not. PS5, you have a with disc reader and without disc reader. That's the difference. That's it. Both consoles run the same specs. Brilliant. Smart way of approaching it. Won't sell as many consoles as Xbox because they're not as cheap. Yeah. But it is the best thing to do for developers because they don't have to worry about having a bottom line. The price is what I expected, to be honest. It's about where Ooh. I thought it would be. Um, I didn't so, expect them to have two consoles. I know you explained it to me before the cast or whatever. Um, but my f- initial thought when I heard that was, if the only difference is a disk drive, why is it a hundred dollar difference? But, because it's so I can actually answer that question because you're not paying for a disk drive. Disk drives mm-hmm. are quite literally like yeah. five dollars of added cost. What you're paying for is you're paying for the licensing money Sony's not going to get. So if you get the discless console, you have to buy everything from Sony store. Mm-hmm. If you get the disc console, you can buy used games, which nobody gets a cut of that money except the retailer. So you are literally paying $100 for the ability to play used games. Now, if you don't, and if you never buy used games, who the fuck cares? Save 100 bucks, buy two other games. Um, if you do care, yeah, you're paying a premium. Well, and also they had the disk space issue. I don't want to say issue, but 
yeah being all digital with as big as games are with not a variable option for hard drives i don't know how quick that shit's gonna fill yeah, yeah that's true but but let's let's be clear though that even disc based games you're gonna have that issue because cod doesn't ship you a 250 gig blu-ray disc yeah right like you still have to load a lot of other content and patches because you can't dynamically the patches kill. The disc. yeah the patches kill. but either way uh those prices are out um so now the entire table set we know what all the consoles are going to cost and what they're coming with um some other news with the ps5 it is not going to be backwards compatible well okay no 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 <laughs> that's not what that says no no that was the other things that were coming out as well so okay explain what you're saying here okay so the ps5 it's not natively backwards compatible with ps1 2 or 3 you can still play those games through ps now and other types of streaming slash emulation services but it cannot run the the software directly that means it's not backwards compatible if you're running a streaming service that's not saying you're compatible right but it's important to call that out because it like people are saying oh shit that means i can't load up ps now and play this and play shadow of the colossus no you can you absolutely can well i mean um, that's the same thing as saying you can't play dvds on a that's like saying you can't play DVDs on a console and thinking people would mean that you can't watch Netflix. It's important to call out. If you have to call it out, I don't want to work people to that denominator. People are fucking idiots, man. Have you seen this year? We gotta- <laughs> I don't want to work to that denominator. We got to spell this shit out. By the way, don't play your PlayStation 5 if you're in the bathtub, like with it. Okay, bad idea. They're not waterproof yet. Yeah. Not yet. Not yet. Um. And I think that's all the actual PS5 news. Um, so let's see where we were. Okay, Super Mario 3D All-Stars is actually being emulated. I don't know why this surprised everyone. People are so fucking pissy about this. And other than the, the timed exclusive thing, I don't think it's that bad. Like, okay, yes, they didn't up Mario 64 to work at like, you know, perfect, pristine crisis levels of, of quality. It's it's a it's Mario fucking 64. Who cares, guys? Yes, Mario Sunshine has like hacks enabled to let it work on widescreen devices, but it doesn't run at like 4K. All right, get the fuck over yourselves. It's a goddamn GameCube game. And you're on the Switch. Yeah, like what what the fuck do you want? People on Reddit are going nuts about this shit. Like, oh, it's emulated. It doesn't run native. Yeah, it's so fucking what who actually cares the game still works it still plays well and yeah. yes while it's not running mario sunshine at 4k do you really fucking need that really people want a bitch it's what it comes down to people like that uh, there's all oh, there will always be something to complain about in everything yeah. always and there's always I somebody intend- that is complaining about it <laughs> yes <laughs> i intend to pick this up next month because i am super excited to get my hands on it yeah. I'm going to get it physical since we have two switches. It just makes better sense if I can find it. But, okay, next on the list. This will be quick. NVIDIA is in the ar- or in the arms to buy arms. Um, is, is <laughs> NVIDIA is buying arms. Prepare yourselves. The NVIDIA army is coming. No, uh, ARM, the uh, chip manufacturer. NVIDIA is getting a hold of them. So yeah. we'll see what this does. If you want to talk about that, check out our Discord and the Tech Talk channel. I have great feelings on it, but honestly, it's probably not going to matter all that much. Nope. If you're anyway, just a gamer. Uh, cool news. Uh, Borderlands 3. Anyone who already owns it is going to get the next cons- or next-gen console version of it for free. That's a rad fucking move. Yeah. yeah. Especially for a game that was released more than a year ahead of time. Like, I get it for games releasing right now, but that mm-hmm. game's not brand new. Also, um, I'm pretty sure Rainbow Six Siege is going to be doing the same thing. As an aside. Really? Free upgrade, to, yeah. So why I'm is Remedy really being see. fucking stupid with Control? Oh, well, the Ultimate Edition is it's coming out to next-gen consoles. By the way, that's another $60. No, we don't care if you own it already with the Season Pass. Who is this? I missed your remedy start. and control. Oh, yeah. Some people suck. Some people don't. 
Ubisoft has been doing a lot of really good stuff as a dev house in the last few years. So and cleaning their dev house in the last year. Yeah, yeah. So both goes both ways. Clean, clean. Uh, so Tom, you have to tell me about this. I know nothing of this, and I'm kind of excited. Final Fantasy 16 announced. Yeah, it is. Uh, so we know almost nothing. It's basically a story trailer, story slash announcement trailer. Um, but gameplay looks roughly like Final Fantasy 15, which is not a bad thing. That game played fucking great. Um, it's beautiful as shit, which goes without saying, because it's Squaresoft, um, or Square Enix, rather. Um, and it's Final Fantasy that's going back to the, like, hard medieval fantasy. Like, Final Fantasy 15 was kind of like modern era, there's cars, it adds some futuristic stuff. 13 was definitely in the, like future but with magic this is like hard final fantasy 9 style fantasy medieval fantasy only uh so people are super excited for this thing to come out and uh yeah it'll be interesting uh, i'm gonna wait for reviews because the last time i bought a final fantasy game on launch i was severely disappointed with angst corridor game 13 i wasn't seven was great Okay, oh no, okay, I take that back. I did buy Final Fantasy VII Remake on launch, and that was fucking fantastic. But thirteen and, suck a dick. And it sounds like they're staying in that engine, just medieval, so fuck yes, let's do it. Yeah. All right, um, now let's go to the Monster Hunter desk. Uh, Monster Hunter Rise, the brand new installment in the Monster Hunter franchise, Switch exclusive, has been announced for March 23rd, 2021. Fuck yes. I'm ready for some more Monster Hunter in my life. I don't know if you're planning on getting it, but heck yeah. I am planning on buying Rise. Um, I loved, and I, I apologize. I cannot remember what the fucking Monster Hunter on the Switch was called because it had like this big ass long, like deluxe. Genera Generation Ultimate. Title. Are you talking Generations I, Ultimate? I, it was Generations Ultimate, but then I thought there was like another subtitle under it. Either way, either way it's Monster generation Hunter. is really what it yes. is. It was fucking great. I loved it. And by the way, God damn that netcode. I played on a hotel fucking Wi-Fi late at night with people in Japan, and there were no lag issues whatso fucking ever wow. on a goddamn Nintendo Switch. <laughs> like, holy shit. I haven't seen netcode this good since... Well, I, I don't even know what. <laughs> you have to remember, given what type of game it is, they can always air on the side of client because it's a PVE. Yeah, and you know what? Which is it great. Made, like, I understand why it works and that no other game can really do that, but my That's god, awesome. it was great. So yeah, I'm, I'm absolutely picking up Rise on the Switch. I want more Monster Hunter in my life. This is going to be good. I'm they've announced They've announced one previous care or a monster they said there's going to be others that are going to be making appearances which is awesome i of don't want to get too much into anything except for they're introducing something called a wire bug which as tom likes to put it it's a grappling hook you can literally grapple mid-air and pull yourself up so us hammer players don't get fucked when things go airborne anymore <laughs> so i'm pretty excited about that they're really stressing verticality on this they want you to be able to run up walls. They want you to be able to use the landscape better. So I'm kind of excited to see what they do if they go full breadth of the wild on this shit and just let you climb everything. So we'll see. Pretty exciting. And more Monster Hunter news. Uh, a second RPG has been announced for them. Story-based driven RPG called Monster Hunter Stories 2, Wings of Ruin. I said that right, right? Wings of Ruin? I, yeah, Wings I of Ruin. So. Yeah. I can never remember if it's Ruin of Wings, which makes no fucking sense, or Ring of Ruin. Either way, it's a, narr it's a narrative-based RPG it's supposed to come out next summer. If you like RPGs and you like the world of Monster Hunter, it's all for you, but it's not going to be Monster, excuse me, Monster Hunter. So don't think you're getting Monster Hunter. Different game. Anywho. Um, oh, okay. This one's probably one that Tom enjoys and maybe even Adam. Uh, Demon Souls coming to the PS5. Yeah. So, uh, what was and, and possibly, possibly PC. Sony's been going nuts with these trailers. So originally, this trailer came out, and at the bottom, 
it said, you know, coming only to PS5. And then at the bottom in small text, it said, also releasing for PC. Then Sony had their big event where they re-released the trailer. The old one was pulled off YouTube, and that tiny text at the bottom was inconspicuously missing. Um, so is it coming to PC? I don't know. Probably. Maybe one day. Um, <laughs> but uh, at least we know for PS5, uh, I saw the gameplay trailer. Uh, Vetty Vidia, if you know his stuff, uh, discussing Dark Souls lore on YouTube, uh, went pretty in-depth on the gameplay changes and stuff they're doing. I, it looks like they're doing a great job. I'm excited. Uh, I never liked Demon Souls. Like, the first time I played it, like, I played, the world was dark, I got shot, or I got stabbed to death in, like, two hits. I had no idea what I was <laughs> doing, and I said, wow, this game fucking sucks. I never played it again. So I'm really looking forward to actually giving Demon's Souls uh, a fair shake when this thing comes out for PC. For PC. Eventually. If ever. If ever. It all Anywho, um, Tony Hawk Pro Skater Remake 1 and 2. We all yep. got it. We all love it. It was yeah. the fastest game selling game in franchise history to hit a million units. Awesome. That's good to hear. not shocked. And <laughs> yeah, I'm not surprised. Deserve it. They deserve every goddamn penny. I mean, it's a perfect I storm, right? Game. It's a perfect storm. Yeah. You've got a very highly regarded old school game that a lot of people have tons of nostalgia for. And you have a remake of said game that's actually good. Isn't just like some crappy port with upgraded textures. It's it's actually a, a fantastically remade game that captures the you know everything that was good about the original one, except better. Yeah. In a and series that I would argue that like a lot more casual gamers played that too. Like even people yes. who weren't like super gamers or anything are also excited about the remake. So Yeah. Well it was it came out right when gaming started to get pretty popular. Like the PlayStation N sixty four era, I feel gaming got wider. More of an audience came to it. It wasn't as grimy looking. Mm -hmm. Quote unquote. So, man, have yeah, you I, seen the N64? It was pretty well, grimy. <laughs> I love the N64. Get off that case. <laughs> Either way, um, for fastest a million. So, yeah, it's pretty sweet. Oh, on the topic um, of Tony Hawk, I watched that documentary, Tom, that you talked about on last week's cast. Oh, yeah. Uh, What'd you pretend, think? Pretending to be a Superman. It was good. It was fantastic. It was interesting. Everything about uh, the Tony Hawk franchise and how. Um, how it influenced skateboarding and, and vice versa. It was, it was a good time. It's, it's good that you liked it. Yeah. All right. I recommend it. We got a couple more things and we'll get you all out of here. Um, God of War Ragnarok to the PS5. Next game in the franchise. That's going to sell like fucking hotcakes and look gorgeous. I'm sure it will, yeah. I still haven't played the... Um, God, I hate these naming conventions. Some haven't played God of War. <laughs> like 2019. Uh, wait, what, God of what War. Game is that? Oh, you mean Dad of Boy. Dad oh, of Boy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> boy! That Dad of Boy is pretty good. I, I haven't finished it, but what I've played so far, it's fun. And it plays like uh, plays like God of War. Dad of Boy Weird is the best thing I've heard in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> But either way, <laughs> new one's coming. Um, so I know a lot of people are pumped. Yeah. Yep, it's coming. Um, Can and, I add one? Uh, yeah. We got another trailer for uh, the new Resident Evil game, too. Oh, yeah. I didn't write that down. I forgot about that. I haven't seen it. How's Village. It so the, I, it like Resident I, Evil I caught the first trailer live when they did the initial reveal. And I, that trailer was done so well because the entire time I'm like, oh, this kind of like gothic uh old timey village thing what is this a is this a bloodborne sequel is this a new ip whatever and it's it's cool and it's interesting and then at the end it shows village and it's like okay cool a game called village this looks neat and then it the the letters fill in to where the village is actually spelled within resident evil 7 and i was like oh it's a resident evil game fantastic or not seven um is this a eight eight yeah so that was yeah. really, really well done. Yeah, I'm excited for it. RE7 was fantastic. I still only played the demo, and it filled me with dread 
knowing moments where I had to go through this door mm-hmm. and I am anticipating what's on the other side of this fucking door. I go through that door and it didn't happen. <laughs> and then when I go through the door, when I'm not expecting anything, I almost pissed my pants. Ah, yep. So I, I work in a good horror game. Exactly. So I so the, the most recent, cause I looked at actually buying resident evil seven very recently. And one of the Steam reviews, like I'm scrolling down, I'm looking for that one piece of information I need to know if I'm going to buy this. And the review said, not recommended, release VR to PC, you fucking cowards. <laughs> I said, cool. And I closed the store page. Um, so until I get Resident Evil 7 in VR on PC, I am not playing you're never, it. You're never going to play it then. I'm just going to miss oh, out. Gonna just play it. VR, VR play is a place. Just play it. It's probably cheap, and no, it's gonna I'm be gonna, the next I'm sale. Play it, but with a hack that puts VR on the PC, oh, you're gonna, gonna ruin it, it probably too. Yeah. You're gonna throw yeah. up. Just, just play it. At least play like the first hour. <sighs> I don't know. Tom's I'm built mad. a hill. He's gonna yeah. die on it. He's built yep. a hill. Yeah. It's anyway, dumb. let's get out of here on an upbeat <laughs> note that Tom will be excited about. Because he put it in here because it's his game. Hades 1.0 released. So yeah. it is officially no longer early access. Uh, if you are looking for an action roguelite adventure uh, on various platforms, including now the Nintendo Switch, check out Hades. It is honestly the best super giant game I have played. It's got the action of Bastion, the storytelling of Pyre, and the customization of uh, Transistor. So if you like super giant games if you like the stuff they put out hades is the very best of that studio so please please give them your money the game is actually cheap and it's fucking great so yeah all right um we do have one question before we part um toxic just asking what do we think will be out with the new rocket league update i think it's from my knowledge, it's pretty well understood. What's going to happen is, is their their season one is going to start, going to introduce Supersonic Legend. We don't know what the MMR point of that's going to be. I still speculate 19 to 2000, but we'll see. Except that none of the community is calling it Supersonic Legend because that's a shit name. It is Wide Champ. Wide that Champ. is the ultimate rank in Rocket League. <laughs> Wide Champ. <laughs> um. But with that, there's also a new vehicle coming that's going to probably fit the Merc hitbox. I don't know if it's coming in this update. It's or not. It's, it's be Octane future. hitbox. It is Octane. That's been yep. confirmed. Yep. Shit, man. Um, fits the model well, better. Other than that, I don't really expect anything else. Like, I don't expect them to just shock us with stuff because, let's be honest, yeah. anytime they do these kind of updates, they break shit. So the less things they move, the less stuff they break. Yeah. 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 But if you don't know all the, the other stuff coming in... Um, just go to the Rocket League website. They do have a news thing posted with, with all the stuff coming with the next update, if we missed anything. And yeah, effectively what we hit on earlier, you're going to have tournament mode. That's a big, 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 big thing. So tournament mode and the new um, trade-ins are all active. So go have at. And that said, I think that's it, fellas. Unless you guys got any last-minute injections. Uh, hmm. If that's you like- haven't tried what remains of Edith Finch? Give it a shot. Yes. Okay. All that said, here comes the rundown, fellas. So, all of you watching us on Twitch, thank you. We love the live interaction. But we also have a YouTube page, 72 Pin Connector, over there on YouTube. We put up all the clips from the podcast so you don't have to sit through an hour and a half, two hours of us rambling to find the five minutes of actual value that we have a week. So, all the clips are over there. We have our monthly montages of our top plays from the community over there. We're having quick hits over there. And our podcasts are over there. In case you missed one, just wanted to actually sit through the whole thing. If you're over there watching us, thank you. But we are live on Twitch, twitch.tv slash 72 Pit Connector every Saturday night, 6 p.m. East or Pacific Standard Time, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So you can always jump over there, get in the chat with us, and possibly even jump in the games with us since we are playing Rocket League. If you'd like to keep up to date with what's going on with the team, we have been tweeting out live updates during tournaments, as well as we also tweet out plays of the day from the fun stuff from the community. This is the goofy stuff and the fun and good stuff. So you can follow us over there at 72PC underscore official. And lastly, we have a Discord. Join it. 
a lot of cool dudes, play a lot of fun different games. Sure, there's going to be something in there to catch your eye. And that was a fuck ton of information. So if you really forgot anything and don't want to remember anything, just go to 72pinknector.com. Everything's there. You'll find what you need. Well, fellas, I think that's all we got. I think that's everything. Until uh, yeah. Until next week. Game on, everybody. Game on. Drink your water. Drink your water.